Good morning, everyone. I have gotten up and I have seen a lot of the travesties that have gone on as far as Palestine, pro Palestine, is concerned and what the police have done about it. I have no words to describe the disgrace and the dishonour of what I have seen in this country in those protests. Is that blood? Well, whatever it is, it makes me sick to think this has happened. And it turns out it was actually ketchup. I uh, was a messy pup when I was at the barbecue last night for uh, bonfire night. Good friend of mine, though. Anyway, I want to bring it back to what's been going on with this pro-Palestine march. And I also want to bring up a point that we got a problem also brought up. And I'll be linking his video in the description below so you can see it for yourself. But also, the fact that people have been knitting poppies. Now, you may think this is a good thing. What if I were to tell you that these poppies were of the Palestine colours? I'll repeat that. What if I told you that the symbol for remembering those who have fallen on Armistice Day was now being used by left-wing media to knit poppies that signaled in favour to the Palestinians. I know what I felt when I saw that shit. I felt repulsion. I felt sickness. And I feel, felt absolute, utter disrespect to those that have fallen. And what's sad is someone, who I won't name, actually told me not to go out of my way to mention this. Because all I'm doing is feeding negative energy to it. But the way I look at it, is this is a total, total, unequivocal sign of disrespect to those that fell in two world wars. There was a reason I did my video yesterday, remembering the fallen. Because I wanted to be so, so fucking wrong that there was going to be a protest on Armistice Day of pro-Palestinians basically showing their support for a terrorist group. This person who also told me as well to not put negative energy into it also said that I would not change anything. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my mother has the same mindset Though, unlike in the past, I don't actually have to worry about not, please, uh, uh, not pleasing her with my actions anymore. And likewise, I am in control of my own world. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit idly by while we have people who are completely intolerant of our beliefs, our culture, and our, and our society. Now the guy even mentioned about Morgan Freeman. How do you stop racism? Stop talking about it. And I do kind of accept that to some degree. However, there comes a time, as I said, where there is an act of ultimate disrespect that you need to put in place. Or put people in their place for. And I believe this is one of them. 
So to the Palestinian cunts who literally have no respect for our fallen heroes. Fuck you. Seriously. Fuck you. You literally choose Armistice Day. Of all the times. You couldn't pick any other fucking day. To support your cause. And to be fair. I probably wouldn't even do it myself. Because of the fact that. Why would I want to support a terrorist group. But my point is. Why choose Armistice Day. And there's only one reason. One fucking reason. They would do this. And that is to basically overshadow the people who fought in two world wars and died in them. I don't care whether you're left or right of politics. Surely, even people on the left have to see that there is something seriously wrong with doing this shit. Surely. And if you don't think there's anything wrong with this then I would seriously recommend going to your local GP and getting yourself checked out from the neck up. Because there is no way any normal person would think this is acceptable. But you know what makes this even worse? It's the fact that the police did nothing. In fact, they marched with them. They marched. With these people. And then made these weak excuses of. We're doing all we can. <laughs> Do you know what they did? They went up to them and asked them to move. And then they said. No. Do you know what you should have done? The moment they said that. You should have started arresting the cunts. Oh but of course. You wouldn't dare. Because you fear being called a racist. You fear being called a racist so much that you couldn't just go in and do what I would call a landmark fire. Or in this case, a landmark arrest. Take a couple of individuals, arrest them in front of the group, and send a message that if you do not stop what you're doing, you will be arrested. <clears throat> Because if it was just a normal march, that would be one thing. It is the fact that in a lot of these Palestine marches, they have called for jihad. And for those who are unfamiliar with this, jihad, in layman's terms, is basically calling for a holy war. It is calling for war in our country. So we have people who are hateful of our beliefs, who are disrespectful to our dead, who are calling for jihad and calling for war in our country. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this because say it with me, folks, it doesn't suit the narrative. These motherfuckers should have been taken off the streets 100%. I will always support a people's right to protest up to the point it resor results in committing criminal acts. I said it would just stop oil and I'll say it with the Palestine movement. The only difference is just stop oil were basically committing criminal acts of major disruption and, of course, criminal damage. Whereas these guys are inciting violence, basically. They're inciting war and inciting hatred. <clears throat> Real hatred. Not fake hatred that the left likes to spew. But the police... Sat back and did nothing. Oh, but I guarantee fucking to you. I guarantee fucking to you. If this was a right-wing protest, 
If Tommy Robinson had got the EDL together, or if Tommy Robinson had uh, wanted a armistice march in the streets, oh, I guarantee you the police would suddenly find their courage. I promise you that. They would find their courage if it came down to a Tommy Robinson movement. But because it's Palestine, oh no, 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 we can't go near them. We'll be called racist if we start arresting people and doing the job that the British people hire us for. We'll, we'll be called thugs. We'll be called racists. We'll be called Zionists. No, you won't. You might be called racist by those cunts because they want to apply that card because they're nothing more than NPCs. But we will not call you racist because you would merely be doing what we, the British public, ask you to do, which is to keep the peace from moronic idiots like this. It would give you the support of us knowing that you would at least... Do your fucking job. You would not be called racist by the vast majority of the public. The left might slam you, but at the end of the day, the left's wing views don't matter because they do not correlate with the vast majority of the British people. They do not understand that it is not them who holds the power. It's us. And at the end of the day, you're supposed to protect the public from retards like this. You're supposed to protect the British public from people who are inciting violence. And that is exactly what these jihadists in the pro-Palestine movement have done. Bearing in mind as well, like I said in my previous well, one of my previous videos, because I know I've made a few of them as of late, that Israel wants to move the Gazan population. 2.2 million Palestinians, 53% of which support Hamas. But you want to sit here and support these Palestinians, who are also in support of Hamas. My brain is, well, my two brain cells, I should say, are literally fighting for the, the knife inside its head right now to try and kill themselves. Because the way I look at it, these people who incite jihad should have been arrested the moment they incited jihad. But as I said, our police are so spineless that they are more worried about being called racists than what would happen if these people got what they wished for, and that was to have a holy war here in Britain. Now, I don't know about any of you, but even that mere thought scares me. Because if they're willing to just ignore the threat of war in favour of not being called racist, what else do you think they'll do? Honestly, what do you think they'll do? They have proven they are not loyal to the British flag. That, at best, makes them... Incompetent. At worst, it makes them traitors to the British people. And yes, I will say that. And if necessary, I'll say it loud and proud in the fucking streets too. I believe my our police force can now unequivocally be called traitors. Because they do not support the British people and they do not support the British values. They're more interested in appeasing Islam. They are more appeased, uh, they're more interested in appeasing these 
extremists marching in our streets. Oh, but the moment Tommy Robertson and a, ro a rally from him comes along, here come the batons. Here come the boys in 50 fucking riot trucks ready to go to war in full riot gear. Our police are a disgrace. Do you know the old saying? The fish rots on the head. We need a serious reshuffle of our police force. From the, from the top, right from the top, the commissioners, the managers of this place, the sergeants, everyone. We need a complete corporate reshuffle. We need to take out the trash and replace it with people who are passionate and patriotic to our country. We do not need a woke police force. We do not need a woke group of politicians. We do not need a group of woke lefties in this country. What we need is strength and unity. I feel like I'm quoting Kane now from Command and, Command and Conquer. Anyway, we need people who will stand in unity with the British people. We need people who care for British values. We need police that actually hate to see these kinds of hateful people, to use the left-wing rhetoric. These kinds of hateful, disgusting Palestinians who incite real hatred and incite real war on the British people and anyone who goes against their beliefs. Don't worry, that was my screen. But my point is, they need to be dealt with. Because until we deal with them, it's only going to get worse. And eventually it will lead to war. Or, if we've decided we've had enough, which we totally can say at any time we wish. Any time we wish, we can call for a revolution. Any time... The British public could form a single force and overthrow this government. Bear that in mind. We have the power to overthrow this government. To overthrow this police force. To overthrow the corruption that lies at the heart of our country. <clears throat> We have all the power to do that. It just takes a pair of balls. Whether up here or down there. Or in my case, both. But we need to gather our strength. And we need to be prepared to do whatever is needed. To stop this shit from happening again. I don't condone violence, but they are not giving us much choice anymore. I am honestly of that firm belief. We have politicians who want to appease these guys. We have police who appease, stand by, or do nothing about those who are calling for jihad. We have a left-wing mob that is more interested in causing major disruption through domestic terrorism. And we have mainstream media who are more interested in giving us biased broadcasting propaganda than actually giving us impartial news. Where do we go from here? Every single time we have called for action from our government, from our police force, from our media, it has only been met with resounding failure. All talks of peace, all peaceful resolutions have failed. What are we left with? Because the next step after the Palestinians 
calling for jihad will be that jihad actually happens. Are we just going to sit back while it happens? Or are we going to start standing up for what we believe in? Are we actually going to stand up and face the treacherous forces that lie in front of us and take out the trash? We should decide that very soon. Because we don't have much time left. I don't think this country's got another year left in it. I honestly don't. I think if we don't do something now, within the next 6 to 12 months, our country will fall. And I think at this point, the police, as far as the police are concerned, this is my direct message to them. You have completely lost all public support. Nobody has faith in you anymore. Nobody trusts you anymore. And now we see you for what you really are. A Gestapo police force. More interested in taking sides and using two-tier policing. You aren't willing... To take action against the jihadists who are inciting violence and hatred. Oh, but the moment it's any of us who even show the slightest sign of overexcitedness, there you are with 20 crews of riot police in full gear with batons at the ready, ready to smash the shit out of us. How dare you? How dare you? More than willing to turn on your own people. Then turn on those who would be against us. This is why we have no respect for you. Which is why I will never trust any of you. I'd only be calling you begrudgingly to do something if there was something happen around here. And even then, I wouldn't be very help hopeful of you guys actually doing anything. You sure as shit ain't getting my name unless I'm being charged with something. Your forces are a disgrace. And you need to seriously, all of you in the police, take a long look in the mirror. And remember why you donned that uniform. Back in the day, you swore an oath that you would serve the British public. You've broken that vow. And as such, you are left with an ultimatum. Do your fucking job. Or we're going to do it for you. And we are not using kid gloves. Trust us on this. We will not hesitate to get physical. And to our politicians, you people are just as bad, if not worse. You have actively gone out of your way to appease multiculturalism and diversity and inclusion to people who are completely intolerant of us, to people who have no desire to integrate with us, who have no intentions of integrating with us. You are more interested in virtue signaling. You are more interested in net zero and you lies. I mean you, Les. Or maybe I was right first time. You're more interested in appeasing all these other dickheads who literally have zero, zero interest in our country other than to take our benefits package. Though in their defence, I can't really blame them considering you, the politicians, have made our country look like a soft touch. We need a strong and tough leader.
And since none of you in politics right now have actually got the brass bollocks to stand up there, take the criticism from the others, all for the sakes of doing the right thing, and actually sending a lot of these illegals straight back to their country of origin. Until someone does that, we're screwed. And until someone stands up and does it, I will always hold the lot of you in absolute contempt. As does the vast majority of the British public. What saddens me worst of all is that I suspect none of these Palestinians will get arrested for inciting hatred and war. Their own fucking hate crimes and they're not going to charge them. That's what's sad. They're going to get away with this. But I guarantee you, if we even said anything even slightly out of place, oh, they'd arrest us on several hate crimes. <laughs> oh, I assure you of that. They won't dare do it to these Palestinians, though. Because, as I said, they fear being called racist. The mainstream media, of course, will not mention any of this. Because they want this to divide people. I'll accept that much from what my friend said, that this is what they want. They want us to go to war. They want a violent revolution. But here's the thing. Even the army back a couple of years ago had said categorically that if there was a, a plot to overthrow the government, the majority of the army would be on our side. That needs to tell you something. We have got to be prepared to do what is absolutely necessary for the survival of this country. And the only way we're going to do that is to basically take this country back from our governments. We have one last option as far as peaceful Resolution is concerned, and that's at the ballot box. The only way we're going to get anyone who actually cares about us in power is if we as a collective vote reform. Vote reform. And maybe there's a chance to reform this country. But if Labour... All the Conservatives win the next election. We'll be stuck with them for four years. And that can only result in worse and worse and worse situations for the United Kingdom. We need to do something about it. And if all else fails, then we could be in for some of the darkest times in our country's history. My name's Dabima, also known as Abba the Rex, and I am, as always, very bad news for these pro-Palestine jihad calling cunts who have no respect for those who fought in two world wars and died in. Our crooked police force who sat idly by while they allowed jihad to be chanted on the streets. And for these same Palestinians to be openly racist by calling us white trash. And of course our spineless politicians for not doing their duty to protect the realm and its inhabitants from these extremists that now march on our streets. In the ultimate act of disrespect. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. And most importantly, fuck the government. And fuck the police.